Hi, Hi, I'm Nami. And I'm Michael, and welcome to Mike and Nami Plus. Today, I'm going to be sharing about, or will be sharing about, our video game addiction, obsession, and how we got into it and came out of it, the process. I'm 28 years old now. I came to Canada when I was two. My whole family moved there. I have two sisters and older sisters. They're sister. here, here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> here, they moved here. Here. And so my parents owned the convenience store as Koreans. I don't know if you watch Kim's Convenience, but very typical immigrant Korean. So they worked hard. I had wonderful, loving parents who worked hard, 14, 15, 16 hour days. And because they were away from home for a lot of time, not necessarily in my early childhood years, because they, my mom was very involved in my life, but later into my adolescent years, they were very absent in my life. And so my parents became video games. And so I went from playing, what, an innocent two, three hours a day to a bit more dangerous levels of six, seven hours a day when I was in grade six, when I was, what, 12 years old. Mm. And that six hours a day turned to, in high school, when I dropped out to like 10 hours and weekends, I would sometimes play 15 hours. For me, it might have been video game addiction, but for you, could it perhaps have been social media addiction? Like screen. Screen time. TV. I don't think I am at that point where I want to get out of it because now it's turned more into work. And Mm. in a sense, I feel like that helps too because then because it becomes work, it's like something that you don't want to do as much anymore in terms of like watching YouTube, checking Instagram. It's different. It translated now into other things like drama or Superstar BTS or manga or MapleStory. I would go into games to run away from people and kind of confide and hide it's kind of like my uh, hidden dirty closet that no one knows about that i'm playing this much right i would feel like absorbed into like a black hole i just wasn't happy about my life for me it's like i'm going in there because i want to live a different world oh because people usually they are addicted to something to escape their life right for me I get addicted to things because I want to experience a new life. Like, for example, in a drama, like experience that storyline. In a yeah. manga, experience that that storyline, yeah. that kind of shoujo, pure okay. romance kind of thing that I get really hooked on. Or like BTS? Superstar BTS or <laughs> Maple Story. It's like in a world of like people. The it's first, like opposite of you. Yeah, the first one is me. I go into escape. Mm. So I grew into gaming addiction. Yeah. And you also grow out of it. Mm. And I think there are some times when it's just like a cut. You just right. totally disconnect it. For me, it has. It was a long process in. Like a 5-10 year process right. in. And then like a 5-10 year process out. But I find that gaming addiction is very easy to fall into. Mm. It's so fun. It is fun. Yeah, even and TV. It's so fun. It is. I'm going to pull up the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So the basic needs are food, food sleep, shelter, the physiological and safety needs. And once those are met, the other needs become more emotional, social, and then self-actualizing. And what gaming does is that it so well fulfills those upper yeah, needs. Yeah, the upper needs with like little work. And, and that's why it's so addictive because it's so accessible it's instant mm. and it's also anonymous because you don't go to school or go to work and, and have to think about tell about, people yeah. that oh I just play games all day I think mm. the biggest motivator for if you are struggling with some kind of internet addiction or online or video games or social media is oftentimes we always say oh I hate work I hate my job right now I hate going to work I don't want to go to work but we also we can easily miss out on how work produces genuine joy and that's so much more foundational too because when you're just feeding an addiction it's a good experience it can be a happy experience but only only that momentary time Mm -hmm. like you can have a happy experience but be unjoyful doing it right but what work does it it makes it joyful even though you may not have a happy experience at all times but that joy is a lot more substantive more fulfilling more foundational Mm. it carries you through and that was what i was trying to discover too and realize that and so and i was five years of day by day kind of grinding and re teaching myself do you feel like you're addicted to anything like for me especially in high school was youtube and Mm. then later i was just so obsessed with 
making sure I checked every single post on Instagram. And even on YouTube, I was making sure that I watched every single video on my subscription feed. But I feel like I did see people share here and there like, oh, I'm, I'm always addicted to YouTube. Just I'm on YouTube 24-7. I live on YouTube mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. Please share your thoughts and experiences. So that's it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.